Hello, from our Bloomberg World Headquarters here in New York, I'm Melissa Long. In today from Mark Crumpton, you're watching Bloomberg Bottom Line. Here are some of the stories we're following for you. An unprecedented look inside the Federal Reserve with the release of thousands of pages of secret loan documents. This is almost three years after our parent company, Bloomberg LP, asked for the information. Lawyers for the Securities and Exchange Commission looking at the events surrounding the departure of Dave Sokol of Berkshire Hathaway. He bought stock in a company that he later proposed as a takeover target. We're talking about that. And I want to show you a medical device. Here it is that many baby boomers might be pretty familiar with, hip replacement. We have a story from Bloomberg Businessweek about failing devices from the company owned by Johnson & Johnson. First, though, let's focus on one of the big stories today, the Fed naming names, albeit reluctantly, the central bank today turning over 29,000 pages of documents which really detail the banks that borrowed from the Fed's discount window. This was, of course, during the financial crisis. It took a lawsuit that went all the way to the Supreme Court to actually get our hands on these documents. Chief Washington correspondent Peter Cook is one of the many Bloomberg reporters combing through the material. And, Peter, I'm curious what you found and how far you've actually gotten into the documents. Well, we're still digging through these documents. There are a lot out there, but uh, Melissa, a little history here first. The discount window, as you know, a direct loan program to banks was a critical tool in Ben Bernanke's toolbox when the financial crisis first hit. The Fed not only lowered the discount rate for banks at the beginning of the crisis, it extended the amount of time banks had to repay the loans. We knew that banks took advantage of the program, the opportunity, because the Fed told us some of the aggregate numbers, but now we know who took advantage specifically by name and how much much they got. Today, the Fed handing over a computer disk to some of my colleagues here at Bloomberg that included more than 29,000 pages, as you said, of information detailing the loans. Now, at its peak in October of 2008, the Fed lent a record $111 billion to the discount window. That was not long after Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy, of course. The biggest single borrower at that time, we now know from going through these documents, the European bank Dexia, which received a loan of $31.5 billion. That was on October 24th. Wachovia, an American bank, of course, borrowed $29 billion on October 6th, borrowed more just two days later. Wachovia later acquired by Wells Fargo. The German bank Depfa, another example here, borrowing $25.9 billion on November 3rd. So a lot of foreign banks here. That's one of the things that stands out as you go through these documents, Melissa. But also there are a long list of American banks, small ones, banks you've never heard of in local communities around America that were facing liquidity problems there, needed the cash went to the Fed, as well as mid-sized banks and large banks. We're still going through a lot of this uh, documents uh, right now, trying to glean more information. We learned a little bit more about the collateral some of these banks were putting up as well. And we want to get some instant reaction from here in Washington to the release of these uh, details, the discount window details. We want to bring in Ron Paul. He's, of course, the congressman from Texas, the Republican chairs, the House subcommittee that oversees the Federal Reserve, and he's been a longtime critic of the central bank. Uh, Chairman Paul, thank you for joining us. Your immediate reaction to some of the details we've been able to provide on these documents? Well, so far it's just so overwhelming, but uh, Bloomberg certainly deserves a lot of credit and congratulations for getting this job done, something we've all tried to do, but fortunately your efforts have been have paid off. But the size of it, the 29,000 pages and what, a hundred and some trillion dollars, it, it shows, you know, how much out of control this whole system is. Technically speaking, Congress is supposed to authorize and appropriate every penny spent. But here, this is bigger than government itself in what they do, and they're bailing out foreign banks and the whole mess. But to just think of all those transactions, how big it is. I mean, I thought it was bad, but it's even, even bigger and worse than I ever dreamed. What I plan to do, though, is we have hearings coming up in May scheduled for this very purpose to go over everything that the Fed has supposedly given us, try to dissect this out and ask questions why why is this done and what are we going to do then talk about how are we going to restrain this and they'll of course will argue well just think how bad it would have been if we couldn't have bailed out everybody so I think it's an opportunity to bring to the attention of the American people how out of control this monetary system is and connect that with our bad economy because I think there is indeed a close connection congressman Paul I wanted to ask you about the documents I'm not sure if you've had a chance to look at them and, and I am interested if you have and what you think of the appearance I understand many of them really in raw form 
No, I have personally not. My staff has just gotten hold of them just, uh, you know, a, a short while ago, and they're starting into it, so I don't know the details. But I don't expect they're going to be able to give me a summary in one hour or two. It's okay. going to be a big, big job. So that's why the hearings are scheduled several weeks off so that we can uh, really analyze these, ask the right questions, and if they haven't given us the, the questions that uh, we, we, you know, can't answer the questions we ask, uh, we need to pursue, you know, pursue this and get the interpretation. So uh, hopefully uh, this will all benefit all of us, and I, I think it will. I mean, just the exposure Chairman. of this is a tremendous insight into what's going on. Chairman Paul, doesn't this information to some extent back up what Ben Bernanke and others at the Fed were talking about during the financial crisis? Banks went to the discount window because they didn't have other opportunities. The Fed acted as a lender of last resort. And as you said, they're going to tell you, listen, if we didn't have this opportunity for the banks, things could have been much worse. Yeah, they're, they're going to do that, but we, we don't know that for sure. Maybe we're not over this crisis yet. You know, the other thing that they tell you why they want secrecy is they don't want to let the public know that there is a problem. Now, isn't that strange? Now, if you're a businessman and you have the SEC and you have to fill out these reports, if you deceive the people and fudge your books and accounting procedures, you go to jail. But here the Fed participates in fudging the figures and hiding it and say, oh, we don't want to be alarmist just because they're bankrupt and we're bailing them out. Why don't we deserve this information? So uh, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's ironic that we have allowed the Fed to get away with this so long, and hopefully it's coming to an end. A moment ago you were talking about how there was real resistance to the release of the documents. One of the other concerns was a possible uh, depositors going to get their funds out of banks or perhaps uh, the stigma that might be associated with, with lending in general. What are your thoughts on, on the stigma now associated with our banking system? Yeah, well, if it's deserved, we should, because that's information. That's investment information, and they're doing poorly. Maybe if we'd have known that, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago or immediately when it started. But even now, people say, well, it's not going to be as easy to go to the discount window, so we're not going to be able to prevent the next depression. Well, that might be good that they can't go to the discount window, because it's not true wealth they're dealing with. They're just they're dealing with a secret organization that creates money and credit out of thin air in bail certain individuals out at the expense of others. And what in the world are we doing thinking that we can pass out tens of billions of dollars to banks that are overseas? And uh, at the same time, we have problems here at home with people not being able to pay their mortgages and they're losing their home. And we have a, a recession going on, an unemployment rate of 22 percent. Yet You can say, well, look, well, we can't prevent a depression on Wall Street. And we have to take care of all these people, including foreign sure. banks. The American people are going to be outraged when they understand uh, what has been going on. Chairman Paul, let me be clear on what you hope to do with this information. What do you think it might mean on Capitol Hill? There was an effort in Dodd-Frank to, at a minimum, force the Fed to release this information on a lag time of two years. You want to go even further than that? You'd like to restrict the use of the discount window going forward? Well, you know, if, uh, I don't like the Fed at all, so I think uh, the discount window and the lender of last resort, which has been around for a long time, everybody sees that as a positive. I see that as a moral hazard because that makes bankers and lenders be reckless. If they're, oh, you know, we can take a little more risk, uh, and even depositors become more reckless because, oh, I have the FDIC, they're going to protect us. So that helps on the short run, but on the long run, it contributes to the malinvestment and the bubble uh, sensation, you know that goes around. Uh, so no, we, th that shouldn't even exist. Uh, uh, the lender of last resorts is part of the major problem. It, it teaches people to do things and take risks that they shouldn't be taking. Chairman, to borrow your words, you don't like the Fed at all. You authored the book, uh, End the Fed. Is that still a concept that you really embrace? I do, but uh, my, my position in the book, and it has been for years, is that I don't think it would be wise to close the Fed down in one week. I think what we should do is just get rid of the, uh, the monopoly control of this cartel where they can do so much outside of the Congress creating money and bailing out their, their friends. But I want competition. I want to legalize the Constitution. The Constitution says that only gold and silver can be legal tender. Why don't we allow that to happen? But if you want to use a gold coin, they might put you in prison. They might charge you uh, sales tax to buy a 
dollar or coin, and they might charge you capital gains taxes. But that means that if the Fed is uh, doing their job and everybody loves them, they can keep using this paper money. But if they do what I expect them to do, there's going to be a lot of individuals say, you know what, I don't like this depreciating currency. If I'm going to save for my kid's graduation or, or going to college, I'm going to do it in, in the gold standard or the silver standard because that will protect the wealth that I need for you know the next 20 years. Chairman Paul, one last question for you. The presence of so many foreign institutions on this list, is that going to get a lot of attention on Capitol Hill? Well, I, I think it sure is. I think that's an attention getter. And uh, we'll be looking into that and try to get an explanation and a justification for that. All right, Chairman Ron Paul, of course, chairs the House Financial Services Subcommittee overseeing the Federal Reserve. Uh, Melissa, a lot of folks here in Washington will be paying attention to the details coming out of these documents from the Fed. Of course, Chairman, thank you so much, Peter, uh, as well. And, of course, this is something we'll be talking about for months, years, perhaps, on end, those hearings as the chairman was talking about coming up in May.